Okay, here we are live. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to call this live segment going forward real estate investor uh, market update. And what we're trying to do, it's uh, you know, kind of a trying time right now. Uh, we want to add some clarity. Uh, we we want to take the fear out of what's going on. Uh, almost all of our guests, well, I, I'm assuming all of our guests have already been through uh, these market changes. Yeah. I, I know I've been beat up a lot. So, <laughs> and, and I'm old, so it's not only do I bruise easy because of my age, <laughs> It adds a little bit of wisdom and we've seen these cycles before. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe this is going to be uh, temporary. Uh, my name is Bill Fairman. I'm with Carolina Capital Management. This is my co-host, uh, Jonathan Davis. Before. I am uh, currently getting a feedback in my ear. So if I'm hesitating, Bill Fairman, I'm, Bill Fairman. I'm with Carolina Capital so, Management. Uh, what I'd like to do is introduce our guests. If, uh, all of our guests will put themselves on mute for a moment. <laughs> that will that will help me out. <laughs> Not only am I old, but I'm easily confused. <laughs> so we have with us today Mike Zlotnick of Tempo Funding. He's in the uh, uh, Brooklyn area of New York. He does uh, a lot of uh, he, he does lending as well as uh, commercial uh, properties in, in a fund and. Uh, he, he's also a, a mathematician by trade, so he very, always very smart guy. He always sounds a yeah. lot smarter than the rest of us. <laughs> uh, we also we also have uh, Jacob Vanderslice. He's with Van West Partners. Uh, they also are in the commercial space. Uh, I think most of that is in uh, the self storage. Not if I'm saying that correct. Okay. Yeah. He says yes. <laughs> um, uh, we have Glenn Stromberg of Stromberg Investment Group. Uh, he is in what we like to call the real estate space. So he specializes in mobile homes on land and all of those are for uh, turnkey rental purposes. Mm. We have uh, Chris Miles of Money Ripples. He is the anti-financial advisor. And uh, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff uh, from his perspective. And we have Fuquan Bile, which is not, he's not on yet, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming he will be here shortly. He's with NNG Capital. So before we get started, guys, I'd like to talk about the bill that was passed um, last night by the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of little things I want to highlight in there. If you're a small business owner and uh, you're, you're worried about keeping cash flow going. This is going to help, but if you need it tomorrow, it's not going to help. Yeah, if you need it tomorrow, it's, it's not. If you, but if you can, if you can, you know, hold tight for two or three weeks, I think you, uh, it will definitely be very helpful to a lot of small business owners. By the way, before I, I get into this any further, I want Jonathan's wife to, to realize we are more than six feet apart. <laughs> it's just when you're on camera, it makes you look a lot closer. That's right. See, it, <laughs> it adds weight, but it also makes the room look smaller. Right. He's, he's, not, he's not really this close to me. Um, <laughs> so a, a couple of little highlights from, uh, from the bill is your local bank. If you have a bank uh, relationship with your local banker, that's where you need to go to get this yes. uh, stimulus loan. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be for uh, payroll, payroll taxes, health insurance benefits that you're paying your employees, uh, rent or mortgage, mm -hmm. utilities, uh, insurance payments. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how long for, but it's going to be a fully guaranteed loan from the government. So it's going to be a lot easier for the banks to underwrite these because, hey, um, they're going to use their standard uh, underwriting practices. However, they're, they're not going to really hesitate not to give a loan yeah, you're knowing uh, that as long as you're a qualified, yeah. you know, borrower mm -hmm. because the, the government is going to back it up. And if you, uh, you know, don't, and, and, but, and by the way, there's a little bit of, uh, it's also payroll and there's a little bit of concern on whether it's for retention or uh, rehiring and it did say rehire and retain I thought or, it was for or retain yeah. and rehire. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are concerned there because we can't wait for government 
a lot of us had to move, uh, you know, right away because, Hey, you had no revenue coming in. You had people there not, not working. What are you going to do? You can't wait for government to make up their mind. Mm -hmm. And, and by, by the way, it's going to be 10 days uh, before they even get guidelines on this. And they still have, it still has to be passed by the house. So um, it's going to be a little while before you get there, but what you need to do is make sure you call your local banker right away. Make yes. sure you get in line, mm -hmm. let them know that uh, you want to do this and go ahead and get uh, your normal stuff that you would get for a, for a loan, your tax returns, your balance sheets, um, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Go ahead and get it started. Yes. Yeah. No matter what the guidelines end up being, it's always prudent to, to get going. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're trying to get these uh, SBA loans that are for disaster stuff, uh, we, uh, some of us heard some horror stories last night from a, a dentist that was involved in a flood and it, it was a nightmare trying to get that same kind of disaster mm -hmm. <laughs> SBA stuff. And yeah. They ended up coming out of pocket with, with most of it. So, okay. Um, call your banker, get this all set up. Yeah. I'm going to start off with a question to, my, Oh yeah. Before I get there, Hey, Fuquan, He's trying to just on. smile. He's on. Um, so I, I'm, I want to tell everyone that's watching, you can chat and ask questions uh, to the panelists. Uh, we'll see them. And if time allows, we'll, we'll ask them while we're on the air. If not, then we'll, we'll try to answer them offline. So uh, Jacob, I'm going to start with you. Uh, what part of the commercial real estate space do you see having the biggest issues short term, long term and why? All right. I, maybe I need to unmute you. They said one moment. Okay. There it is. Got it fixed. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having us on. Uh, my name is Jake Vanderslice. I'm a principal at uh, Van West Partners. We're a private equity real estate investment company based out of Denver. Um, we focus on a variety of asset classes, mainly, mainly self storage. We've got some retail, we do residential as well. Um, the, the fallout that we've seen so far that's been most precipitous and most alarming is within retail and hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you've got, you've got most of America right now, especially in our geography, um, where retail businesses have completely shut down. Uh, tenants can't pay their rent. Landlords have a problem servicing their debt. Um, we've heard of a, a lot of discussions on payment deferrals with various landlords and their bankers. Um, so retail has definitely been a big one that we're seeing. Um, another one that we're seeing too is hospitality. Um, I think, uh, before the virus really spooled up, um, vacancy or commercial or hotel occupancy rather in Denver was roughly at about 5% before they closed all the hotels. Um, typically in March, uh, they're tracking around 71% occupancy. So just a precipitous drop there. So those are really the two big asset classes that we're concerned with. Uh, retail and hospitality. Uh, a third, which hasn't really manifested itself yet, we think is going to be workforce housing, especially, you know, C plus, B minus, multifamily. Um, a lot of the tenant base in those in those product types are hand to mouth um, retail workers making 20 bucks an hour. They're bumped up with roommates and those guys are losing their jobs. Um, so we can see a problem happening there, too. But those are the three main areas that we're, we're concerned with. Excellent. So, um, Mike, uh, let me pose the same uh, question to you. Sure. <clears throat> Mike Zlotnik, um, fund manager. Easy way to find me is bigmikefund.com. Uh, <laughs> that's the name of the podcast, and that's our website. Uh, I'm a fund manager. We have a broad, diversified portfolio of assets. Um, and uh, the areas of concern, for sure, as, as, as Jake mentioned, uh, hospitality that is uh, in a deep, deep hole, and it'll continue to be there. And we're already seeing uh, all kinds of data um, confirming that. Retail, I, I literally just had a call uh, with a uh, shopping center operator who does have a number of uh, shopping plazas, not the malls. And um, they're waiting for the data uh, on April 1st. Uh, most of those malls are, well, not malls, I'm sorry, shopping centers 
are <clears throat> grocer anchored. So uh, grocery stores are staying in business and they're likely going to continue to pay. People need to eat, even though there's a shift to delivery yeah. versus going to a store. Uh, but shopping plazas uh, with um, some of these essential businesses uh, probably will survive. They're certainly going to take some level of a beating. Uh, so that sector, again, not shopping oriented. Plazas are okay. Big malls are in horrible shape for sure. The, um, the one sector uh, that seems to be picking up, and again, th this is a contrast. Some's going down, some else going up. Is a self storage. The data we, we're seeing is that the self storage is picking up right now, as economy is going to hit. It's going to likely hit the recession. The self storage generally does pretty well. Um, the um, some office might get hit. Obviously closed. Uh, so the office that. Uh, uh, leases to brick and mortar is in is in difficult times. The office space that leases uh, to the businesses that can operate remotely um, can continue to pay rents, maybe somewhat reduced rents. Uh, uh, but if it's a white collar, uh, when the crisis passes, the, the, those offices will continue to operate. Uh, we, we expect some level of uh, demand falling. Uh, for the office space over the next um, you know, few years. But in the short run, really, uh, the, the key question to ask uh, is what, what type of tenants they have and, and uh, whether the, it's a blue collar or white collar employment. The white collar seems to will, will do fine or at least not as bad. Uh, the, the other sector that, uh, uh, as Jake mentioned, might take some level of a correction is affordable housing, uh, although it's really a function of how affordable if uh, mm -hmm. most folks in those apartment complexes uh, are Section 8 and they're getting government help on employment, they're probably going to continue to pay rent. There's nowhere to downgrade. So, uh, but the blue collar, uh, sort of a, somewhat above that, there's a, it's going to be a trench of blue collar uh, multifamily. Those will take uh, some level of a beating if this is a prolonged uh, recession and prolonged crisis. Uh, but the very low end probably will, will be okay because of the government support. Uh, yeah. So. Thanks, yeah. thanks Mike. You, you know, there's going to be a shift, obviously, in the market. You, If you've shifted your restaurant business to really take out or, or uh, delivery, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to be in a retail place. You can have that business in a, uh, more, more of those, you know, warehouse type uh, spaces because you're not really going to have that many people coming if you're delivering. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, my, my next question to you two, and let's start uh, off with uh, Jacob. Where, where do you see um, the, the, the properties that are going to be worth more or the, the biggest positive changes? Yeah, um, well, it's easy to say because we're we're in the business already. Um, but definitely self storage, as Mike has had mentioned, um, within our portfolio, we track net rental activity on a daily basis. So net rentals is the difference between the number of move ins and move outs. Um, so, for example, uh, January first to the twenty sixth, we had about eighteen or twenty net rentals. It was roughly the same for this for the time period in February, and for the month of March now. Uh, through March 26, we've seen 65 net rentals across our managed portfolio. So part of that seasonality, but um, I think part of it too is maybe people are cleaning out their homes, kind of getting ready to be strapped into their houses for a while. Um, people are moving. A lot of kids are coming back from college because they can't be at college anymore, um, filling up storage units. So we like storage as an asset class, and we think it's going to perform well during this downturn. Um and I, and I do think as, as afraid of workforce housing as we are, we think that's a very defensible asset class as well. There's always going to be a need for workforce housing, especially as affordability becomes more of a challenge. Uh, wage growth is not meeting uh, home price appreciation. We kind of see a, a nationwide shift to being more of a country of renters than a, than a country of homeowners. Um, and beyond that, uh, you know, I'm not sure where the flight to stability is right now um, in general across all the asset classes, I think investors should be focusing more on income and cash flow uh, than they are capital appreciation. Um, I think that uh, net worth is not going to mean as much in the coming months or the coming year as cash flow does. 
and uh, cash flow solves all problems. So we're trying to focus on deals that only produce existing income streams as they are versus taking major risks on deals that are empty with no revenue. Right. Well, uh, you also forgot the possibility of those extra people hoarding their toilet paper and, and hand sanitizers. They need that self storage for that. That's Mike? right. Exactly. What about you, Mike? <laughs> So I concur with Jake. Uh, we are uh, very cash flow focused today. Um, the you've heard me speak about the quadrants methodology. So we, we like investment grade quadrants, focused on cash flow or very defensive things with downside protection. Uh, I do think that going forward, uh, it's going to be a lot of surgical precision looking for deals that have those characteristics. I like uh, we do invest quite a bit in hard money loans and defensive. Uh, commercial debt at lower investment to value ratio. So those um, type of deals uh, with good downside protection and, and, uh, and experience uh, in, in, in strategy execution could provide significant opportunities. Again, distressed commercial debt is counter cyclical. Just an example, again, I'm in New York City here. Uh, some of these, uh, there will be failures and the, 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 the landlords will be defaulting on more and more of these loans. And that's an opportunity to scoop them at a great price and uh, uh, take it, you know, take advantage again, not being a vulture, but uh, trying to salvage these type of situations where the great assets could go uh, at a discount. And instead of buying them, you buy the paper, the first lien mortgage that um, uh, un th th that is in a senior position on the capital stack. And foreclose on them, or work out a deal where you 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 get repaid with with, with a good with a good return. Those are very defensive uh, type of investments because you're in a senior position. Uh, obviously, self storage itself. Uh, the new projects, uh, the new origination has to, <coughs> has to be very strategic. You know, that that whole business is a five mile, three five and one mile uh, radius business. We do like those. We have a number of those assets in the portfolio today. Uh, all the new stuff we're doing in that sector is uh, essentially um, uh, very cash flow focused. Uh, there will be other opportunities. So the world is not ending tomorrow. There will be great deal uh, on many multifamily assets, on uh, some you know shopping centers and so on. Th th there's going to be a retrade. It's already happening today. So retrade simply means that what sold for ten million. A month ago will trade now for seven and a half now what's happening in the short run the mortgage the cnbs markets commercial mortgage-backed securities markets are frozen so they're no lenders who want to fund those deals but when this this market restabilizes and the lenders will come out uh and fund again the the values the trade values will come down quite a bit but the cash flows have to stabilize and reset in other words uh, there's a lot of uncertainty who's going to pay rent on April 1st, who's going to pay rent May 1st, who's going to pay rent June 1st. Once that shakes in and, and, and there's going to be a significant level of retrade and the opportunities will come up. So literally 20, 25, 30% discounts are very possible once the numbers shake through. So the opportunities are going to be uh, coming up, uh, significant opportunities uh, in the commercial space. You just need to understand what they look like so you, that you can invest with great confidence that you're getting a good deal. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree with with Mike there on the on the on the paper, um, on the commercial paper. And if if you want to know more about that, visit you know uh, Mike's website. Or if you have questions about it, uh, I I spent several years doing that myself. So uh, you, there's many people on here that you can you can talk to about that. Uh, does anyone have any any questions or or comments? Anyone on the um, Chris, Glenn, Jacob? Fuquan, anything that you want to say? Well, no. we, we do have a question from uh, Sohill mm -hmm. uh, who, who asked in the chat box. And basically his, his question is, you know, what are the banks doing since the landlords can't evict, you know, tenants for non-payment for a particular uh, period of time? So, so my, my feeling mm -hmm. on that is it depends on who the bank is. Uh, you know, your, your bigger banks, your, you know, your Chase, your um, Wells and uh, Bank of America, they're, they're, they're going to give a little uh, forgiveness uh, for, you know, a few months too, because 
you know, they've already made a deal with the state of California for the owner occupant uh, type mortgages. I, I don't see that they're going to change that for the uh, commercial loans, but you know, mm -hmm. some of your smaller banks, uh, you're just going to have to call them. <laughs> that, that's basically how it works. You're going to, most of them aren't going to volunteer uh, to take deferrals. Uh, yep. You're going to have to prove to them that uh, you're, you're going to have issues. Yeah. Your, your poor business or whatever it is has been affected yeah. by this virus. Yeah. Yeah. The bigger banks, they, they have a big PR stuff going on. They're, they're not going to volunteer. Uh, you're you're going to have to ask Glenn, did you have something to say? Yeah, I do. This is something that not only for banks, but for us too, you know, we've got 350 properties under management. So there is a 60 day moratorium. You cannot foreclose. So, um, but it, it does not alleviate people from the rent payments. So we are expecting some bumps in the road, obviously. Fortunately, about 50% of our tenants are, te are section eight. So that'll take care of itself. Mm -hmm. there's, other, there's, other, there's other government programs coming out for assistance. Of course, the stimulus package is going to help on that too. So, so like what we did was we sent out a letter just saying, we understand what's happening out here, but please understand, you know, there's, there will be some grace here, but you know, the, the, the money is still going to eventually be due and, you know, we're going to be understanding here the next 60 days, but uh, you know, you're still responsible for the rent and you're spending, we're, 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 we're showing them the programs to go and to check into and to, to help them to get the help that they need. Okay. I've, got, I've got one example to offer there too. Um, on our, on our retail portfolio, for example, we proactively approached all of our tenants and said that we're going to defer two months of your base rent to kind of get them through this. I mean, our success is their success. And if they can reopen when this is over, we're all going to be better off for it. And on the bank side, in terms of what banks are doing with these payment deferral issues, um, one of our banks automatically offered us six months of interest only payments instead of amortizing. And that'll save us quite a bit of money. And I was talking to one of our bankers right now. And as you can infer from what I've been working on the last week, which Bill mentioned earlier, it's been talking with bankers often and regularly. Um, there's a regional bank in Kentucky. We're buying a few self storage facilities out there next month. And they had mentioned that they forecast over 75% of their commercial loan portfolio to go into payment deferral. And mm -hmm. they're still down to lend. Uh, they're still doing deals and they're still moving forward. Um, but this is a systemic issue and it's been kind of refreshing to see kind of contrary to the last downturn that everybody is being touched by this lenders, landlords and tenants and everyone's working together to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, I have one quick comment on this. So it's exactly the case uh, with uh, we were all in this together. So I did I place a call. My wife is optometrist here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we're closed and um, I did call our equipment lender, Wells Fargo Bank, and 15 minutes conversation, I need a deferral immediately. They already have a policy in place for all uh, distressed areas. All you have to do is call, request deferral, they'll deferral. Uh, that's the basic step you can do for now. So it, it's, it's sort of a mitigation for two or three months at this point. Uh, if this is a prolonged problem with people out of work for more than 90 days, uh, there will be probably step number two. You can call, call back and get another few months. Uh, they understand. I think there's a moratorium on foreclosures, moratorium on, on evictions. Uh, so just proactive conversations take care of it. If you have tenants and they have an issue, uh, just be prepared that um, you have to do something to help them out. And that's the way to do it. To get, do it together, do it as a uh, united country. And we'll get through this. Uh, yes. But the banks are certainly very, very responsive today. All you do is call, explain that you are in a disaster zone, you're closed, and they'll do an immediate deferral with me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely That's agree. Um, you know, I think being proactive, as the other panelists mentioned, being proactive and reaching out to your tenants, whether you have a large rental portfolio um, and or, you know, reaching out to your lenders and explain the situation. I mean, we're, you know, fortunate enough to have, you know, a, a very high percentage, I would say around 85% of our rentals with subsidized programs from New York and Section 8 and things like that. Um, you know, those programs for those landlords who have that in place, they won't be as, you know, they won't fully impact like most of the people who are just, you know, who have cash tenants. Um, we've actually received a few calls, not many on the note side where we had some performing notes where people were asking, you know, what type of, um, and sit with, with, with type of programs that we have in place 
in order to help out with the current situation. So we you know, have been in contact with our loan servicers and like everyone else, we're willing to you know, give a helping hand through the, to the current situation. Um, everyone will be impacted from this. Um, this would definitely make everyone stronger and you know, for whatever's next to come. But th there will be um, down the line uh, possible opportunities for people who position themselves over the last couple of years. You know, we've been in a very aggressive market. It's been a, a seller's market, you know, forever. So this was, you know, inevitable. But it's it's something we just have to take day by day and, and make sure that we're executing on the plans. The benefit that, you know, I see in all this is definitely more family time and more time to really evaluate your strategy and, you know, the people that's in your circle and who you're doing business with. I actually, I actually have had a question on the private lenders. You know, how are they being impacted? The hard money lenders and stuff like that. I haven't heard too much. I'm hearing about the big banks, what they're doing, you know, to the homeowners. But what are you guys hearing on a private lending and the hard money lenders who may have projects up and running um, that's, you know, been stopped through the townships not coming out doing inspections and stuff like that? Are you guys, well, of course, the first didn't roll around yet, but what are you guys seeing on that end? Well, uh, you know, that's a, good, that's a good question. And that kind of, uh, I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. I know uh, Jim and Mark both had questions and I'm going to answer Mark's first. And then I'm going to kind of give you a take on what we're doing, you know, on the, the private lending side. Uh, Mar Mark had uh, any rec, do we have any recommendations uh, for alternatives to Pier Street? The, they basically didn't close his loan 20 minutes before he was supposed to close. And, and I think to, to clarify and, that, that's a long-term loan. Right. That was, that was a long-term loan. And that's yeah. what I was going to uh, mention. We have uh, almost every lender out there that has uh, institutional capital behind them or put a complete pause on any long-term rental loans because uh, they aren't sure about valuations going forward. Yeah. And, and the secondary and, market was frozen when they made that decision. Yeah. yeah. And, and they, they sell those things off too. And mm -hmm. they, they're, they're in a position right now where there's too much unknown. Uh, that's going to be temporary till they figure out how, how valuations are going to go. And then they'll, they'll start lending again. Uh, and that gets back to us and our uh, portfolio. So we're a private lender. Um, we're working through uh, a few deals that were already in the pipeline. We're going to, uh, we're, we're not stopping those in the middle of closing. We're mm -hmm. going to finish those out. Uh, but we're putting a pause on the, uh, every, everything else coming in. We're, we want to see how the valuations are going as well. Yeah. Um, I haven't, fortunately we're in an area in the Southeast where things haven't been completely closed down. Construction is still allowed to go on. Uh, the, the largest county in our area is Mecklenburg County. That's the county that Charlotte is in. They have a mandatory, you know, hunker down at home order. Uh, but construction was uh, an industry that they felt was vital and you're allowed to go to work. Yeah. Uh, however, the, the county government is, you know, kind of shut down and they're not going out and doing inspections. <laughs> so you can only do so much construction work before you have to move to the next phase and you have to have it inspected before you can move to the next phase. Yeah. So uh, I don't, I don't know how that's going to, going to, going to play into yeah. that. And, and I saw Mark, your, your comment about totally sh with short term and, and five years fine. The, the issue is, is still the valuations. Um, it's the, it's the LTVs. It's the unknown right now for them. So, you know, if you're looking for uh, 70, 80 percent loan to value right now on current valuations, I think most people are kind of out of that right now. And, and everyone's kind of sticking to 50 to 60 and, and lower for sure. Right. Um, and that's if they're even lending at that at that LTV. Yeah. So and, and it's everybody, uh, every everyone in that uh, industry is on pause right now mm -hmm. so they can get a better handle on the valuations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Bill, I'll just second that. It's exactly the conversation. Secondary markets are completely frozen and mm -hmm. um, major players in the industry turned off, especially Wall Street backed. Uh, the portfolio lenders are doing exactly that. They're tightening up underwriting. So mm -hmm. you may still get a file here and there. We, we are still doing a few final loans with the uh, old relationships, top clients. I actually had conversation with a couple of top guys who do 20, 30 
fix and flips per month. Uh, and some are operating just fine if they haven't been shut down or the real estate is considered to be essential in their uh, state and some are closed. So the ones that are closed, uh, asking for a discount, deferral of interest, and we'll work with them. And those who are operating and are able to get deals, they're getting deals actually at a better price. They're, they're retrading, their offers coming back, lowering them, and uh, they, they are trying to do um, the work. But the focus is on the most affordable range. That's the only range we're looking at. Uh, turnkey range, sort of as affordable as it gets, in the cities that don't fluctuate much in value. And I believe that there's going to be some level of continuous uh, construction in, the, in some cities and some will be completely turned off. Like we had a conversation with the gentleman from Philly, they're off. The quad cities um, are on uh, and then in their pockets here and there. But uh, all major players are, they, they, they disconnected for the next couple of months, most likely until things stabilize. Uh, just, I hate to say this, but if you will have a loan request, just be patient. There's not much you can do. You could send a lot of emails, a lot of requests. 90% of players are going to be uh, turned off at this point of time. You know, it's funny. I saw that the governor of Idaho put a shelter in place order too, and they're one of the least populous <laughs> um, states out there. So and I know they have pockets of population, but yeah. Uh, even the ones that don't have a lot of population are, are, are starting to do this. Um, uh, do you want to ask the next question? Yeah. And, and we'll, and we need to get to Jim's question at some point. Well, but, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to actually but you're take, gonna answer that. I'm going to take Jim's question and ask everybody at the end. Okay. Got it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Glenn, Glenn, my question is for you. Um, I believe that most of your tenants seem to be in uh, somewhat rural areas in, in your uh, real estate. Um, do you think that that's an advantage or a disadvantage and, and, and kind of walk me through that? You know, that's hard to say for sure, but I would say to some degree, it's an advantage. Uh, they're, they're away from the populous centers. You know, I'm here in downtown Fort Worth, walked to my office this morning and there is nobody here. I mean, there's nobody here, places shut down. I think rural areas are a little bit more free to travel and so forth. Um, but, uh, but, you know, only, only time's going to tell we're in uncharted territory here. It, it's, it's really a tough, you know, I, I, I've been, I heard, I heard a guy say this, but, you know, after 9-11, the 2008 crash, right, everyone was able to dust themselves off and go back to work the next day. You know, today we can't go to work, right? That's the problem. So um, I, I think that, you know, the jury's out on that, but I, I would say, yes, I believe that that's going to be, you know, somewhat of an advantage, but uh, I'll probably know a whole lot better in 60 days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. All right, and uh, my next question is for uh, uh, Fuquan. Um, you invest in a variety of real estate-backed uh, assets. Uh, are you leaning to any particular asset type, or are you, um, you know, steering away from any others? And, and kind of walk walk us through that. What are you What are you um, gravitating towards? So I find the assets I find invest in are a real property local here in New Jersey where I've been investing the last 20 years and also notes nationwide. So again, um, we, don't, we don't have a crystal ball, but we believe you know in the future, possibly sometime around Q3, the mom and pop landlords you know, will be floating trying to get liquidity. We actually have a marketing campaign in place now to try to do more um, buying on terms uh, for people who need fast liquidity, who can't refinance. So that's the strategy that we're applying now. And we are not buying any more high end fix and flips. So maybe probably about 10 months ago, I kind of switched over to lower end, um, you know, buy and sell properties, $350,000 resale price or less. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, but the rents was because we are, we have relationships with, with uh, Bad Women and Children Program, Section 8, where we rent subsidy units, so we're still increasing our rentals. Uh, so we can find, you know, someone who is looking for liquidity, we'll, you know, we're exercising that option to kind of help them out and also take control of the property and, you know, do whatever upgrades need to be done and get someone who is uh, in the subsidized program into the unit so we can, you know, kind of count on that cash flow. As far as the notes, it's been a seller's market, as I mentioned, 
um, both for real estate and notes. So we just made a trade in Q1 and we're kind of still going through the onboarding process of that. We're actually probably, unless it's, you know, single buyers, single people who have assets want liquidity, um, who's, who's willing to, you know, get favorable pricing will definitely execute on that. Um, but that's really the strategy. We're still doing notes and we're still doing real estate, more rentals um, than a flips because again, we don't know where the market, where the pricing is going to be 15, 20%. You're hearing all types of stuff, but no one has a crystal ball. Um, like everyone else, we're just making sure that we have liquidity and that, you know, when the opportunity arrives that we can, um, you know, definitely benefit from that. Again, first and foremost, you know, the landlords that are looking for liquidity and have stuff in our geographical area, we're going to execute on that. And if we find opportunities in notes, it's still the same strategy, but just, you know, no more high end stuff. I actually have one high end property now in the market, um, put up, put on the market Valentine's day. And, you know, who knows where the pricing is going to reset to that, but there's enough equity in that for us to be okay. Um, but our strategy is pretty much still the same diversified hybrid real estate investing model. The people who just did fix and flips or wholesales or just notes or had one type of investment strategy, you know, where there's no buffer or a hedge against, you know, what we're going through right now, those are the people who's going to feel the impact. So our strategy is pretty much the same, a mixed portfolio of real property and mortgage notes. Excellent. Um, you know, one, one of the benefits of this happening is that, it's happening to everyone. <laughs> so um, every, everyone is going to be a, a little more apt to work with, with each other because it, it, it's happening to, to everyone. So, yeah. and, and you have to, I mean, you have to keep in mind, you know, and uh, go back, I guess, to, to Mark's question a little bit. Lenders are looking at all these deals right now as is, as if, if this is the last amount of money I have, to do this deal, would I do this deal? Sure. And every and so that's how everyone is looking at everything right now. And just keep that in mind. I mean, you know, like Mike said, have some patience because secondary markets are frozen and people are having to evaluate these deals on a asset by asset, case by case basis. And it's, you know, everyone wants to keep some powder dry because we sure. don't know what's going to happen. And, and if you're just joining us, um, you can, ask a question over there in the, in the chat box and time permitting, we'll, we'll ask the panelists uh, before we can get out of here. And if we can't get to it by then, we'll uh, try to an answer you offline. So um, I was going to ask who Chris, you've been over there smiling the whole time. I haven't asked you anything. I'm sorry. So uh, Chris is our anti uh, financial advisor. And I I'm curious, uh, what, what is the majority of your clients? Uh, I know they've been calling you with questions and comments. What, what is the majority of the subjects um, of those questions that you've been asked recently? Yeah, with most of my active clients, most of them have been thank you, right? Um, because we've been very cash flow focused, you know, providing passive income, things like that. And, uh, and I had one client who was in California said, Chris, man, I am so glad I'm not in the market right now because I just pulled out last fall, saved me a quarter million dollars of losses, right? Um, but I'll tell you the other side, the people that didn't hire me, even some from last fall, the same ones are saying, I just lost a couple hundred thousand and, uh, and I hope it comes back. One of them was supposed to retire next year and now is saying, well, maybe I should work another five years, right? Um, it's, it's a fun time right now, <laughs> depending on what perspective you have. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely new in so many different ways. But I think the fundamentals are still the same. You know, uh, biggest advice I've been giving my clients, uh, even leading up to this, was get lean, get liquid, and get out. Right? Um, you know, obviously get lean in the sense of like we've already heard before, right? Like make sure that we're trimming the fat, that we're kind of limiting, eliminating unnecessary expenses. Like really doing, putting our focus on how do we be as profitable as possible. Even if this is your own personal cash flow, you know, how do we make sure you have enough cash to buffer? Um, that leads into the get liquid. How do we make sure we have savings and, and money available? Um, I've had people go and I even told my clients a couple weeks ago, I did a group call and I said, guys, everybody hit the bank, get your, get, make sure you have a key lock in place, get up to at least 80 or 90% and 
and then cash it out. And then as an extra me measure of protection, move it to another bank, right? Just in case, because we never know what banks can do. Because if I learned anything from the last recession, the last recession, what happened there is that banks cut limits like crazy. Once things got tight and we're already seeing it in the commercial space, it will happen in the residential space here pretty soon is that if we don't get that money out, it's going to be trapped in there. And, and there's some people who have been gambling and been, you know, banking with their HELOCs, you know, cashing out, investing, and then using all their cash flow to put it back on their HELOCs. Well, if they cut back those limits, all that money, all that cash flow you had earned is going to be trapped inside your home equity. And now you're going to be illiquid and that's going to put you in a world of hurt. So that's what I mean by that is like, you know, get lean, you know, get liquid and then get out. You know, um, I can't legally tell anybody to sell off their stocks or mutual funds or whatnot, but man, <laughs> like there was, I remember when I was down 5%, I was saying, are you sure you want to be in this? And people are like, well, I don't know. I don't want to lose 5%. You know, now the market, even with a little recovery, is still down about 25%, you know? And so at what point, you know, psychologically, people don't pull their money out, right? They just stay in there and ride it no matter how long it takes. Now, the question is, can I get my money out? And like what you guys just said, be patient, you know, look for opportunity. Personally, I'm still buying properties. I know I even just been emailing Glenn, looking at some of his properties to buy for cash flow right now while keeping other li money liquid and available for later, about a 50-50 split. So, so that's kind of what I'm seeing and that's that's kind of what's happening. Again, my clients are feeling pretty good because they have cash flow coming in. But for those that don't, the time to act is now. Well, one of the benefits of the uh, insurance program that uh, you're always touting, uh, mm. the cash value life policy, is that you could take, uh, 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 here's a great strategy. You go ahead and get that HELOC, uh, or, or line of credit, you go ahead and get the cash. You don't have to worry about putting it in another bank. You can actually sure. put it in a cash value life insurance policy, which will probably pay you more than what it's costing you on the interest rate you're paying mm -hmm. on the HELOC, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. It's a, you guys mentioned dry powder. I mean, if, if you oh, don't know how long you'll be waiting, free. that's <laughs> what's that. And that part of it is tax free too. That's right. It's tax free. It's kind of like a supercharged savings account slash Roth IRA in a sense, right? Where it's tax free, get better returns than the definitely better returns than savings right now. Now that the rates have tanked completely. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely great options to be able to store cash, keep it safe. And another thing too, in most States, you can keep your money safe from creditors and lawsuits. So as we get on the other side of this, are people going to start getting too happy? Are people going to try to get money from any place they can, you know, because, there's no doubt we're moving into a very deep recession as a result of this, if not a depression, just depending on how this all plays out. So uh, uh, protecting your money, staying liquid, make sure it's there, but still earning money on it too is I think absolutely essential right now. Yeah. And uh, if you're worried about it not being liquid in the uh, insurance policy, uh, you can easily uh, borrow against that while mm -hmm. the balance is still earning and you can use that money uh, to find those deals that have cash flow uh, when those opportunities come up. So it, it's easy to get liquid in, in those accounts as well. And you still have that asset protection, right? That's right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's all about the, how you design it, make it a minimal cost, maximum gains. You know, it's, it's definitely a big thing of it, but yeah, it's a, it's a great time right now to be able to protect what you have and then grow it too. I, I really, I'm very excited for the opportunities because of the last couple of recessions I've weathered, this is the best financial position I've been in. So I'm like, I got my gloves ready. I'm like, I'm ready for this. You know, let's, let's bring it on. You know, uh, we're all going to be affected in some way, but you know, I've been preparing for the last decade for this next recession because I got hit so hard in the last one. So this one I have, uh, it's all new, but I still have a lot more confidence than I've had other times when we've been freaking out. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I have, uh, I, again, if you're just joining us, you can ask questions in the chat box and we'll, we'll make sure we try to do our best to get to them. Uh, before we uh, end the show, I'm, I'm going to uh, go with uh, Jim's question and, and he's asking what we're doing in our personal portfolio uh, in, our, in our own investments. You know, what are we doing? Are, are we looking? Are we waiting? Have we made any changes? And, and I can, I can tell you what we're doing uh, in, in, in our fund. I already mentioned that uh, we're putting loans on pause right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that we're working through, I can tell you we're getting uh, advanced interest payments uh, that are part of the deal. So we're putting uh, three to six months in advance payments in an escrow account. Mm -hmm. Plus we're lowering our 
uh, LTVs. Yep. And they're uh, going to be properties, and we've already done this, that are going to be uh, affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And we made that shift last year uh, to go to strictly the affordable housing market with, with loans in our fund. Uh, those are going to be the, the the safest. They're going to be the ones that can create cash flow if they're not uh, currently, but they're also the easiest to move uh, if you have to, uh, if you end up owning them uh, because, you know, the price points are low and uh, everybody wants them. They're, yep. You know, they're, they're, they're valuable assets. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, go around the horn and ask that same question to, to everyone. I'm going to start with Mike. Mike, what are you doing with your portfolio currently? Um, what's your, current strategy. And I'm going to say until you get better information. Sure. So we're going through the entire portfolio. So one is a personal, the other one is, uh, is obviously fund. Uh, but the exercise is identical is look for, for uh, risky points. So what, what do we have in the portfolio? We believe has uh, exposure to these market conditions and to what extent and essentially uh, mathematically s simulate a stress condition assume things are going to go really bad and just project, you know, what's our exposure, what are our risks? And the main question is what can we do about it? If there's nothing we can do about it, well, it's good to know that something is, is uh, at risk, but um, if we, nothing we can do, there's nothing we can do. There are situations where we can obviously impact and make changes. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for what's at risk and what we can do to improve. And then, uh, the uh, we're also looking obviously for the strengths in the portfolio. It, it's basically a review process. Go through everything, think through uh, what you can do today, um, and obviously co cost cutting. Where can we um, reduce risk, re reduce costs as well? So cost cutting, uh, increasing liquidity. Where we we have pretty high liquidity uh, at this point. So we have a lot of dry ammo and we're actually very happy that we have about 50% of our flagship fund is in cash. Uh, and that's that's a lot of dry ammo and that, that's that been sort of preparation. Uh, we can't have too much cash in the bank. It burns a hole in essence because we got to put it to work. Uh, but at the same time, 15% in this market feels pretty good. Um, so that's, that's the key basic step. Uh, the uh, we're having conversations with a lot of uh, our project sponsors and borrowers and understanding what's happening with their business, how we can help, what adjustments we need to make. There might be great opportunities where they need a little bit more liquidity. We can come in, save the project, um, which we already know, get a good return on, on incremental capital and protect our, our uh, existing investment. So that's what we're doing. We're analyzing existing portfolio because new deals are sort of frozen. So it's a time to look at what you got and how you can improve it. Excellent, thank you. Jacob? Uh, we're just generally trying to be defensive and we're trying to be more liquid. Um, we're looking at more cost cutting measures, uh, not because we're out of money, but just so we can buy ourselves a lot more runway through this downturn. Yep. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but we're focused a lot more on cash flow with new acquisitions. Um, in terms of managing our existing portfolio, really our only problem area is our retail line of business. Um, we're doing everything we can to, to mitigate that with rent abatement, uh, cutting deals with lenders. Um, but our storage business, as I mentioned, is not seeing any really negative effects from this yet. Um, we're trying to acquire new acquisitions with long-term debt, so we're not up against a, um, a short-term maturity date. And we're trying to buy deals that aren't reliant on a low cap rate exit in a couple of years. Um, again, just more focus on cash flow. Um, personally, I'm not really doing anything different. Uh, we've got a rental portfolio of single family residences and some storage facilities uh, uh, outside of our various institutional and private equity partnerships that we're holding on to. Um, so not really doing anything directly different within our current asset base other than just trying to manage risk and, and really focus on cash flow and, and downside mitigation. Hmm. Excellent. Glenn, you're up. Yeah, very good. Um, you know, obviously, what we're doing, we're in the affordable housing space, right? So it's business as usual. We're, now, what we're already seeing, which is, you know, we saw this in 2008 and we've seen it before, prices are coming down fast. That's why the capital markets are freezing up. Uh, 
Fortunately, we have a lot of private investors that understand that get it. And so, yeah, prices are going down. We're renegotiating some deals. And uh, so from from the business point of view, yes, we're tightening the ship. We're tightening the ship. We're we're cutting all of our expenses and so forth. But uh, but no, I, 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 I think everybody said it on the on this, uh, you know, on this call that cash flow is the name of the game. And, you know, we think the cash flows are going to get better now because the prices are coming down. They're coming down pretty hard. So, uh, so I think there's there's a real opportunity out there. I like what Chris said. I'm I'm you know I I've been I actually built my company for this because I you know I knew it was coming and and I, of course I thought it was going to be three years ago to be honest with you. So I, I'm <laughs> I'm late on that. But uh, but it was you know we just knew the chart said there was going to be some kind of a reset here. And uh, yes, with 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 affordable housing. I totally believe people are going to do two things. Number one, they're going to eat. Number two, they got a roof over their head. And when you have the most affordable roof, I feel like we're long term, we're, in, we're insulated. Like I said, short term, there's going to be some bumps on the road with, with rents and so forth. So that's that's um, that, that's that, that's that's our plan. Mm -hmm. So so that was you, the guy on the corner in Fort Worth downtown with the sign going, the end is near. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that wasn't me. I, 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 always, I always, I always get accused of the being too, too uh, the glasses. I have to have too full. You know that that's what I would do. But, uh, it was, but no, the, the, I mean obviously none of us, none of us could have projected the coronavirus, right? Nobody could, could predict that. But the charts were screaming for some kind of a reset or a pause or whatever. So that, that's and, and you know and that's kind of what I learned in two thousand eight to try to have kind of a strategy that works whether it's good times or bad times and mm -hmm. and. Rentals of affordable houses, I think, work in, in any market. So that's my, that's my take. Well, all of us as a group, because we are, are in all the same masterminds, we've all been preparing for mm. the last couple of years because we knew the market was kind of at the top anyway. And uh, it can't, couldn't do anything but go the other way for a little while. You just need to prepare. You don't assume it's going to happen, but uh, you assume it's going to happen. You just need to be in a position to uh, weather it when it does. Yep. Uh, uh, Fuquan, uh, what what about you? What are you working on? Yeah, well, we did in the in the last two weeks. Um, you know, coming back from the CG event, especially, um, and knowing what was eventually going to be the outcome that we're in now, things slowing down with all the talk that was out there. We've actually been, you know, any projects we didn't start yet, we are in the process of, you know, putting those uh, projects out for a bid again to other contractors who may not be working anymore, give them an opportunity to get back into, you know, doing a job and giving us an opportunity to get the open contracts we didn't start at repriced. And we shifted most of the focus to finishing up the rentals instead of, you know, having a big cruise at the, you know, the flip properties. We moved out those crews over to the rentals yep. because we have, um, you know, a, pretty much a waiting list for the subsidized apartments. So we're trying to just focus 100% on getting that done while everything's in a slow period. And we don't know what the flip market is going to be. Um, as far as the notes, we've really been paying more attention to the 10 out of 12 payments, you know, the people who's behind 60 days trying to offer, um, you know, something that's more affordable, trying to see if they've been affected. And really doing a lot of bar outreach and staying in contact with our attorneys, organically finding out, you know, what's happening in the local market, what courts are closed, pretty much all of them now. But, um, really just focusing on that really uh, in my personal portfolio i've been looking because i don't i can't buy notes that the company owns so i've been looking for onesie twosie notes that people may want to sell for liquidity i'm doing some hypothecation um, i've been on the phone with my bankers uh, trying to execute in the lines of credit that they've been trying to get me to do for the past four or five months so just focusing on that really and just keeping up uh, and making sure that I'm on phone calls and I'm communicating, over communicating with investors and, you know, keeping my ear to the street on what's happening. Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent. Um, Chris, what about you? You know, I, I kind of already alluded to it before, but, uh, you know, my personal portfolio, I mean, we've even pulled whatever little money we had in, even gambling in Bitcoin in the stock market. I mean, we're pulling it out. <laughs> we're getting it out into our hands. Uh, liquidity has been the, the main thing, right? So like, for example, personal savings, we made sure we had, you know, at least eight months worth of expenses, you know, that we could write on for business and personal. Um, now, naturally, because I don't want that earning point nothing percent in the bank, you know, we got a good chunk of that in my life insurance policies and things like that. So it's stored up and it's waiting. 
Uh, but actively, like there's still deals I'm looking for. So specifically, I'm looking at turnkey single family homes. You know, I mentioned Glenn's stuff and, you know, things like that. I've been looking at other funds for money down the road, you know, as well with syndications, much like the funds that you guys have that you guys are offering as well. And so it's really a matter of like, hey, I've got money sitting here. We got, you know, worst case scenario, if income stops completely, we're good for months. We can weather this out and be fine. But we also got investment money over here as well. You know, another chunk that someone's going to be actively investing currently, you know, getting some more cash. We'll keep building that up while keeping more cash on the side of saying, all right, we see what's coming. Hey, what if these big box stores, you know, all these malls and things go out of business? Are they going to start turning into self-storage? Cool. Is that what the direction we're going to start moving? It's just watching and uh, and just waiting in a lot of ways. And, you know, like I said, it's a it's a fun time right now. The one thing I know I'm not investing in is we're definitely not putting money in the stock market. It is not at the low. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I hear people say, hey, we should dollar cost average. We should put you know money in now because it's at the low. I was like, that's the dumbest time to put it in. <laughs> when have we ever had a recession where it dropped in one month and then recovered? <laughs> Never. It takes a couple of years. So that's the worst time to put money in. You know, But you know, real estate, I think, is still one of the, overall is still one of the safer places to be in right now. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Well, um, God is only making so much more land and it's not inhabitable very quickly. Uh, you know, the, the volcanoes are what adds land <laughs> and it's going to take a while for those to be occupiable. Uh, so uh, whether it, you know, obviously residential is the, uh, the most coveted and, you know, people always need two things, food and shelter. And uh, so you can, if you're going to invest in the stock market, do it with grocery chains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, otherwise, you know, keep, keep it in, in real estate. So listen, I want to thank you guys uh, for joining us. Um, I, I do want to mention with, with the bill that was passed last night, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some other changes made to it. So don't take the details you see and hear about right now to heart. There's going to probably be a few adjustments. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a position where you, you think these loans are all going to be forgivable and you can't afford to pay them back, don't get the loan <laughs> because there's no guarantee they're going to be uh, forgivable either. Wait till the details come out. And uh, uh, again, call your banker, get in the position. If you can get lines of credit and get liquid, uh, I suggest you do that. Uh, you don't want to put it under the mattress, uh, but at the same time, don't keep it in the same bank that gave it to you. <laughs> yeah, no. Great. Um, anyway, that said, we're going to be doing this once a week uh, for the foreseeable future to kind of give everybody a, uh, an insight to what's going on in, uh, in our, in our world. Mm -hmm. uh, again, thank everybody and, and, for joining us. And please leave the comments? Leave, leave comments uh, because as much as we want to give you an insight yeah. into our world, we want an insight into your alls and that's how we, you know, all grow and, and get through this together is insight from both sides. Oh, and don't forget to like and share yes. and subscribe. All right. And hey, Bill, Jonathan, great job, you guys. Great job. Well, well thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See you next week. <laughs>